Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing... <laughs> I'm doing my part. <laughs> They're doing their part. Are you? Join the mobile infantry and save the world. In Geneva, the Federal Council convenes. We must meet this threat with our blood, our valor, indeed our very lives to ensure that human civilization, and not Ron Jeremy, dominates this galaxy, now and always. As we plan to invade the Ron Jeremy planet, some have asked, maybe peace is an option. Perhaps diplomacy. My name is Grantham. I'm from Buenos Aires, and I say, "Kill them all!" Yeah! Hey guys, I didn't see there, I was just enjoying nature. When you think of the Baltics, do you think of war crimes or do you think of a very well-built combat rifle in the bullpup configuration? In any case, today we're gonna to be reviewing a very interesting rifle and that is the VHS-2 or as Springfield has for some reason named it, the Hellion, which we won't call it because that's a pretty bad name to be honest. In any case, I hope you guys will join us as we talk about this brand new import from Croatia, the possible Croatian sensation, the VHS-2. Now, before we get into this, we have to thank our sponsors. The biggest sponsor of this channel is the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, there is no better place. Go and check them out. A big thank you to the Sonoran Desert Institute. Of course, we can't forget to thank some sponsors of this video, Zydex Computers, and of course, Arms List. And of course, we can't forget what, Micah? The Patreon. the Patreon, dude. The Patreon is bussing. Micah, my camera guy, is posting everything I don't want to be posted. And, but most, if you're not on the Patreon, you're actually a nerd. It's, it's a fact. And also, you're missing out on some pretty cool product releases that are coming out very, very soon. Ladies, gentlemen, my often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, Croatians. Welcome to the channel. Funny enough, my family thought we were Croatian for a very long time, but it turns out my grandparents were simply German and had pretended to be Croatian to escape uh, persecution in America. Chew on that one for a while. It's weird doing a review on this particular rifle, and the reason for that is it's, it's already proven. Maybe you guys don't know what this is, but the Croatian military sure does, and it's been proven time and time again to be an extremely reliable, consistent, and accurate weapon in every single way. If you aren't familiar with the VHS, this is a bull. Pup rifle. What that means is that the trigger is shit. Um, excuse me. The trigger is 
forward of the magazine and the action. And it allows you to have a very compact package, very relatable for a lot of you. In any case, we do have a 16 inch barrel on this little guy right here. And for a direct comparison, we have our URGI right here. So we have this extended about as much as I normally do. And the, this particular rifle does have a 13.9 barrel about. So you can see the size difference between the two and we're getting a good old 16 inch barrel there. So we get all of that performance out of it. Now this weapon is a short stroke gas operated weapon. It's very reliable, it's been proven before. But the question is, how is it from Springfield? Is anything different? Has anything changed? Well, you know what? Let's go through it and check it out. So we're gonna do what the Navy usually doesn't do, but what the Army does. That's gonna be going butt to tip. So the VHS is very bizarre in a couple ways. And the most bizarre way to me is the butt sock itself. So if you come in here and take a look at it, what's so odd is it's much touted as being adjustable. So it's spring loaded, uh, you can change the position and people are like, that's awesome, adjustable butt sock. Except this weapon has an exceptionally long length of pull. So length of pull, from where it is at my shoulder to where my hand grips it, that is the length between those two is your typical length of pull. This has a three inch longer length of pull than an M16. So having this adjustable butt sock is so weird because it's like, hey bro, you need to be longer? No, I, I don't need you to be longer. It's more than an M16 already. I can be longer. I could be way longer. And everyone knows that three inches is a make or break difference in length. So to me, that's kind of one of the more odd things about the VHS. It just, that adjustable length of pull, I don't consider it to be anything good when it comes to the VHS. Which brings me up to a good point in the VHS, and that is going to be the optic height. So when we have the VHS, we have uh, basically a G36 and an SA80. Um, they got married, they had children, that's what happens when two people are in love. And uh, it's actually pretty good because from the cheek to where you can see through the optic with your typical lower one third optics, you actually get a pretty modern like 193 to 20. So that's actually pretty good with modern shooting. It's a very upright head position and I like it quite a bit. I don't have any problem with that. Uh, I know some people have said that this is too much height over bore. It, it's not anything more than what we've seen with AKs or anything like that. Again, you just have to train to it. Now, that also brings me to a really weird point on the VHS, and that's going to be the reload and how that works. So when we talk about the action on the VHS, it's super bizarre. So first off, we do have a non-reciprocating charging handle, which is awesome, right? Um, now, of course, to operate it, it does lock back, but when you're firing it, it doesn't actually lock back. So we have our, excuse me, let me go ahead and lock it back. So we have that guy, it's locked back. So when you reload it, there's two different ways to release that bolt. Either I can insert that fresh magazine and I can simply run the charging handle and it would throw it forward. Or conversely, what the operating manual wants you to do is to tease it a little. So you have to give it a little pinch right there. And I got the scree. So you compare that to like how a Tavor loads and stuff. It's just kind of an odd motion. So let me show you. Okay, so on the Tavor right here, once I release it, which is way easier by the way, I insert the new one, all I have to do is just hit that right there. It's a much simpler reload process. The MDR has something very similar. The AUG has something very similar. So it's not saying that you can only do it one way, but rather to say that the uh, loading the manual of arms on the VHS 2 is a little bit odd. Which brings me to my next point when talking about loading the VHS, and that is going to be the magazine well right here. So this is changeable. I have great hope that this will be changed in the future because right now, the thing that is really lacking on this is a flared magazine well. It desperately needs a flared magazine well because um, it's a little bit hard to line that thing up. Also, when you're releasing the magazine, compared to a lot of bullpups out there, the release is of course back here. That's not a make or break deal. Again, just a manual of arms thing. I'm not complaining about it. I'm mostly complaining about the bolt release on this guy. Moving from the magazine up to the dust cover, this is actually a really good thing about the VHS. So if you're an ambi shooter, this is a fully ambidextrous gun. So whether you want to eject from the left or from the right, it's a very simple swap over, very easy. They definitely did a good thing. In many ways, it reminds me of the Beretta ARX and the simplicity of that system. So you really have to give them credit when it comes to that particular feature. Going from there, our controls and our grip are okay. So the grip is an AR grip, um, that's fairly simple. However, 
the safety is in a really odd position. So you can see that when you have this thing shouldered, that long ass length of pole, um, for me, I'm fine. I'm kind of have a weirdly long thumb, but it, it's not in an optimal position for sure. It needs to be dropped down just very slightly to work a little bit better. Again, I do have hope that somebody can put in an aftermarket one that can easily fix that problem. I think it is very fixable. If there's one thing we can say about this rifle, it's that the trigger pull is pretty bad. It is better than the AUG, but that really isn't saying much. And I know all my Austrians out there and Australians are getting super pissed about that. But in any case, let's go ahead, let's go set trigger, see what it is. It is a nine pound pull, by the way. So we have a ton of mush right there. Once we get to that mush, we hit our first wall, very plastic feeling. I'm creeping through it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a release. Okay, let's feel the reset. That is a long reset. And then from there, so long pull. It is a slow trigger. And very interestingly, we'll play the clip right here. Here we go. Yeah. Action. Well, the uh, trigger's not resetting. Took this guy apart. It's pretty clean. We're not precisely sure what the problem is at this time. Um, hopefully when we put it back together, um, it works again. But we did have this trigger very oddly fail on us. So we had about a thousand rounds through this thing, primarily suppressed when the trigger just stopped resetting. Uh, we pulled the trigger pack out. It started working again. Micah, I... Yeah. I don't know. Literally took it apart, put it back together, all of a sudden it was fixed. So I don't know what was up with that. Um, we're gonna say it was a fluke, maybe like a primer blue or something not like dirty, that. Not, not no, it looked up, fine. Yeah. I, maybe a primer, like a primer got in yeah, there or something. So. Who knows, but it wasn't resetting. Um, we took it apart, it's fine now, but just very odd. The one thing I do have to say about the trigger is that we did take this thing up to 300 um, when it was very hot, by the way, and we'll talk about that in a second. And it was fairly easy to make the shots. I do think it has a slightly better trigger in terms of how the actual pull is. It is long, it is smooth, however. So I will give it to this weapon for having a, I'm not gonna say a good trigger, an okay bullpup trigger. Um, and that's not really saying much at all. From the trigger and the grip moving up, the one thing that we can say about the handguard is that it is well done. We have M-Lock at the three, six, and nine positions, you can see we did break our light mount because that's what happens on Grand Thumb. But they are in good positions. I would not trust them to mount any type of laser for zero. Lasers would go up here. That does, of course, present a problem as far as activating them. And again, that's just something that you're gonna have to work around. I think a mall would probably be best to run up there. Uh, a peck would be very difficult. You'd probably have to run some type of switch and work on um, figuring out a good way to reach up and change the controls. Now on the light, I had it mounted and I actually had the pressure pad just duct taped onto the side so I could simply reach up over and depress it. And one thing that you can say about the VHS-2 is that this handguard right here is actually pretty thin. So a lot of bull pups are pretty thick up front. So you can see on the Tavor, this guy is a real fat boy. So reaching around it is kind of a bitch, especially once you have a laser mounted up there. So we can certainly say that as far as gripping up here, it is a lot nicer and it is I think well done. Up front, we do have an adjustable gas piston system. So we can go from normal all the way to suppressed. And that allows you to run the guns on different settings. We did run this mostly suppressed with a dead air Sandman and it was absolutely awesome. They did a great job with that. And speaking of which, in many ways, the barrel is the heart of the weapon. And this is a cold hammer forge barrel that is 16 inches, one seven twist. And it is what you would want. I did not expect from a bullpup with a short stroke gas piston system to get good accuracy. But I think the best test of accuracy when it comes to a combat rifle is going to be how well it performs when the gun is extremely hot. So we actually took this out to 300, well, 310 yards, and we shot it once we'd already run 10 mags through this. And this thing was super hot and we were very easily able to make impacts on reduced size silhouette steel um, at 310. No problem. I consider that really good combat accuracy. It's what I want to see out of the weapon.
you know what? I'll give it to it. This, uh, we just did 10 mags on it. And uh, this gun's hot. That barrel's cooking. Yeah, it's cooking, man. And uh, 300 meters, well, that's actually, excuse me, 310 yards. And uh, that's fairly consistent impacts on C-Zone uh, steel. So what we can say about this barrel is it is a combat barrel and it does produce good accuracy. I've seen people getting MOA, maybe a little bit less if they have really good ammo. I'm definitely very happy with the consistency that I'm getting with this particular rifle, especially as it heats up. The three prong that it came with was okay, easily swappable, really not a problem in my mind. Now going up to the rail, the one thing I do wanna mention is that this rifle does come with excellent excellent iron sights so you can see right here when you need them to come up <laughs> you simply give it a little press right here and they pop right up um, they are very well made um, you can tell there's a lot of engineering that went into it it is very well finished um, and it is an excellent addition to the VHS so when we look at the overall rifle um, what do we really see here this is a combat rifle in every way it is a proven weapon it's clearly already seen combat. It's been tested by multiple governments who include the French and the Croatian government, and uh, it performs very well. Now, in terms of, is it worth it for you? That's a little bit harder. So this typically retails for around 17-ish right now. It might drop down by the time you guys see this video. And if this is your first rifle, I don't know that I would recommend it. And the reason for that is it's just a little weird ergonomically. Um, the trigger's not wonderful. And again, I think as far as a combat weapon, there's a lot that can be had in that price point that would probably present a better buy for your first rifle. Now, that being said, do you have a great AR? Do you have a great shotgun? Do you have a great pistol? Like, you have everything. You're good. The VHS is a good rifle, and it's a vibe. So I can't really talk bad on it. I have to give Springfield props for importing a wonderful weapon that is foreign made. Good on them for that. If this were a video game, the ergonomic stat would be negative 20 for sure. But basically, get out, try them. I'm not going to recommend it for your first rifle. I will say the VHS is a vibe, and I will certainly give it that. And again, the, the thing that gives me pause, and I don't know why it happens to me every time, but we had that very odd failure um, that we had to take the rifle completely down where the trigger wouldn't reset at all. Um, maybe it was just us, maybe it was a complete fluke, um, but it gives me a little bit of pause, but I have to note in the same breath that this weapon has been tested multiple times, so it was probably just us in any case. The point of the matter is, is if you have this rifle already, if you're thinking about buying it, the only thing that really matters when it comes to this stuff is getting training. If you don't have training, none of it's gonna matter. Get out there, get training. Tons of great places to get training from. Pat McNamara, Haley Strategic, um, Bear Solutions, Cogworks. Get out there, train, become good at these. I'll take a guy who trains with this every day over a guy with the Gucci's AR known to mankind because this guy is still gonna rock because this is a good rifle. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. We've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, your rifles should look a little beat up. You know why? Because you should be training with them. Make sure that you actually get out there with your stuff and you do all of this. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. The hobby is obviously cool, but there's something a little bit deeper to all of this. Please practice. Please take your guns out. Don't let them be safe queens.